Come on. Big dude. You on the wrong side of the boat, bro. Come over here. Come on. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Whoa. Woo. What's going on, guys? This is Gene Jensen. And in this video, ah, I want to talk to you about fish in a square bill crankbait, bro. Look at this fish. <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be part of my October baits videos. If you guys haven't seen the October baits video, I'll link right up here, but oh my goodness, look at that fish. Whoo! <laughs> All right, stay tuned. All right, a square bill in the fall. These this video coincides with my monthly bait video in October. And what I and he ha, if you haven't watched that video, I'll link right up here, I'll let you guys go watch it. The the square bill is one of my go-to baits in the fall when they, you got to think about what the bass are doing. They have moved into the major creeks and major bays. You know, on those on those uh, natural lakes up north and stuff, they're in the major bays, up on the shallow flats, but they've moved into shallow water and they're following the bait fish. So as you're motoring around or paddling around, keep an eye on your fish finder. When you get into an area that has a lot of bait fish out deep, but they're up shallow in the water column, go to the bank and start fishing and fish along the bank and fish the cover the grass the 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 uh the stick ups and stuff like that and work your way back in the backs of the major creeks on ponds and stuff they just move shallow so just work the shallows really really good as you're walking the bank or as you're paddling um but a square bill is really good because it's it doesn't hang up very much it will hang up but it doesn't hang up very much you can burn it through cover and burn it through you know grass and stick ups and stuff like that and really get a good reaction strike um one of the things you know although the bass are feeding up one of the things i'm always looking for in the fall is i'm looking for that reaction strike because i tend to get bigger bites from fishing a bait and fishing a style that has those reaction strikes so later in the video we'll talk about the retrieves and stuff to be able to get those bites but i want to talk about the equipment first i'm going to throw it on a short medium moderate rod this is a seven foot ten cranking rod and in with most cranking brands or brands of rods that have cranking rods they usually have three main ones i'll we'll have a, a some like shimano has a bunch of them but three main ones a short a moderate uh kind of a medium like a seven foot one seven foot two moderate and then a long moderate sometimes seven foot eleven so on and so forth well the long one is a medium heavy moderate the middle one is usually a medium heavy moderate and the shortest one is a medium moderate and the medium moderate is the one i use for small square bills it casts better um, i just get more hookups and i'm able to do more things with a short medium moderate cranking rod this is a, a an envy uh they 13 fishing's got a whole bunch of different models at different price points it's all the way all the way from like 60 dollars all the way up to this one i don't know how much they are now the envies are their high-end ones but uh I, I love a short six foot ten moderate action rod the line i'm using is some type of an abrasive resistant line this is cigar braze x uh, 15 pound test floor, uh, fluorocarbon sometimes i'll bump up to 17 and if i feel like i'm going to get into a lot of rocks or I'm, I'm in a lake that has giants in it and that kind of stuff i may bump up to 17 because i'm not really worried about getting very deep with a square bill in the fall i want to stay shallow anyway the the reel is a seven three to one or seven seven five to one or a six eight to one i don't like those high speed eight the high eight speed reels and stuff like that um I just don't i feel like i'm i'm working it too fast and i'm actually uh putting myself at a disadvantage to get the to get the hook set in the fish when they do bite the key is of course the square bill small i am no longer throwing big square bills i might try one just to see if it works but usually it's 10 15 casts and i put it back in the box and and call it a day this is a 1.5 and i might even go down to the one size smaller which is the 1.0 but this is a strike king now there's several different square bills that i'll throw um, I always try to have at least uh, two different types with two different types of actions and you can't get much different than the scamp from 13 
Now I am sponsored by 13 Fishing. That's why I know a lot about their baits. That's why I fish their baits a lot. But the Scamp is one of those things that when it first came out as a prototype and I got to go on a photo shoot with it, it was pretty different. Um, I wasn't sure I was going to like it, so I really had to put some time into it. It's got a real wide wobble. Um, it's got a carbon fiber bill, if you guys can see that. It's got... Um, but it acts like a balsa wood bait, although it's a plastic durable bait, it, acts, it floats up like a balsa wood bait, which means that as you're burning it through cover and you're hitting stuff and, and you know stopping it for a split second, it floats up faster and gets away from that cover faster so you can work it faster and also it will get more reaction strikes because it is it floats up really fast. Um, in that photo shoot it was really hard to get them to bite it and the only way I could bite it was dragging it real hard and letting and killing it and letting it float up and then dragging it and beating it into the bottom. We were in Florida so anybody know anything about cranking in Florida it's very difficult anyway. Beating it up against the bottom of a sandy flat and letting it float back up and I'd get I got like two or three bites and I was stoked that I could actually catch a fish on one so anyway scamp um strike king kvd 1.5 and 1.0 a um there's a couple of six cents ones I thought I had with me in the boat but I don't uh, I'll link to all of those down in the description and all the baits and, and the tackle that I'm using so you guys can go to tackle warehouse use my affiliate link and get those if you want to all right, so I want to talk a little bit about the rod because I understand that some of you guys, you can't go and get like five, six, seven, eight different rods for different things and everything else. And I always try to, to talk mostly about the, the rod that's perfect for the technique, but a rod that's not quite perfect that will work is a medium fast action rod and or you can even throw these on a medium heavy if you just try to delay that hook set a little bit, you know, fill them bite, give it to them and then set the hook and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not saying that this is the gospel according to Gene that you have to have to use a moderate rod But you will get more you'll get more hookups and land more fish on a, on a crankbait using a moderate power or moderate action rod And so you want one that bends the you know has a what they call a parabolic bend It bends almost all the way down the entire blank when you, you put a load on it now Why a square bill? Why am I going to choose a square bill over any other crankbait? Well, a square bill is designed to come through cover really really well all right let me see if i can think of anything else i need to talk about while i'm sitting down i don't think so let's go ahead and get out on the water and uh before the rain comes in and try to get this video done i really want to show you guys uh the different retrieves that'll get you bit all right so early in october these bass are moving to the backs of the creeks they're not quite back there most of the, in most of the country they're not quite back there and so i'm gonna work the bank all the way mainly in the areas where i find a lot of bait fish so the first thing i'm going to do is go out in the middle of the lake with my fish finder or the middle of the the creek channel and i'm going to pay attention to how much bait is in the area i start in the first third of the creek which is the closest to the main lake and i go to the middle third and then the back third and somewhere in that area in the in those in those thirds of the creek you're going to find a concentration of bait fish once i find that concentration i move to the bank and i move shallow um, and I just start working the bank. I put the trolling motor down. I got the XI3 going, but God, I put the trolling motor down and I just start to move. And if I'm paddling, I'm just gonna paddle and move. I just got bumped. Just keep moving is the biggest key. Throwing it past and into a lot of cover. Now, some lakes have sparse grass. If they have sparse, gr sparse grass, beat the crap out of that grass. You're gonna get hung up in it. You're gonna pull some grass in, but a lot of grass, milfoil sometimes is hard to, to get off the hooks. But when you get your bait hung up in the grass and you feel yourself dragging a clob of grass in, the best way to get it off so you can keep fishing it is to pop it. And so what you do is you go to a slack line and you go pop, pop, and it rips it out. You can do it up, you can do it sideways, you can do it whatever. But just that little simple, simple pop a lot of times can free up a lot of that grass, especially hydrilla and that kind of stuff, but, and rip it off of the, off of the hooks and make it to where, you know, nine times out of 10, you can keep fishing that bait on that cast and it, it you know, doesn't have any grass on it anymore. All right. So the retrieve, one thing that I've noticed, uh, watching YouTube videos about square bills and stuff like that, and watching people fish square bills on video and on TV and everything else is there's a lot of people that fish them too slow. Uh, it's not one of those slow cranking style of, of fishing. I'm, I'm fishing it on a high speed reel and I'm cranking it as fast as I can crank it. Every single, oh, three of the, or two of the three 
styles of retrieves that I use that I get the most bites on, I, I'm fishing it super fast. So the first one, it's just a straight up burn with, with short stops. You see Edwin Evers do this a lot. Now, yeah, I, I mentioned Edwin a lot. Him and I are we're friends, but I'm a huge fan of his and I love watching him throw crankbaits. But burning it really fast and as you hit something, you, you stop and you burn and stop and burn and stop. Boy, I hit a log. That's what scared the crap out of me. Um, but I'll do it one more time. Look how fast I'm reeling. And I do this when I feel like the fish are one feeding up and I don't really want to hit the bottom. I just, you know, it'll go down. I try to fish it within within two and a half to three foot of the bottom, depending on the visibility. But I really just freaking crank the crap out of it and and stop it just for a split second. So I'm reeling it in, boom, boom. And I'm I'm fishing it super fast and I'm working through. And that really does get reaction bites a lot, especially if you're not bumping into anything and you're not beating the bottom up. Maybe the bottom's too silty to do it and that kind of stuff. So that's when I'm gonna do that. All right, so the next one, I want you guys to watch this from the back from the back camera on this one. This is a very aggressive way of fishing and it catches a ton of fish. And you'll see the pros doing this too. You know, he's throwing it into shallow water and it's called, it's I call it grinding or digging ditches. And they're burning it down to the bottom and then they're dragging it through the mud and the silt. And you hear them talk about grinding the bills off of their baits and they will literally grind a quarter of an inch off of their off of their crankbaits during a tournament and you know switch out crankbaits and stuff like that and you get into these hard bottoms this is not a hard bottom but you get into these hard bottom areas and you just literally i'm just as fast as i can and i'm setting the hook hard i'm acting like i'm setting the hook on fish but really i'm trying to get it to jump out of the off the bottom and get into a fish's face and get them to to just commit on it without commit to it without realizing that's what they've done and it catches a lot of those fish that just don't want to bite lures now the next one is uh, a slower technique it's one of those that i well in a tournament once a wednesday night tournament i was fishing years and years ago um i, I went through an area caught a few fish on a shaky head went on down the bank and i turned around there was a competitor behind me and i watched him come and fish the same spot i was fishing but he was throwing a deep diving crankbait and he was throwing it up into the shallow ish water we were fishing 10 to 12 feet but he was throwing it up cranking it down to the bottom and then he was just dragging it and stopping it and i'm not pulling the bait with the reel is the key i'm dragging it with the rod and this works really doesn't work too good with the scamp because the scamp floats up too fast but it works good with just about any other crankbait like a like a kvd 1.5 and you know those type of square bills the square bills that aren't designed to, to to float up real fast the the key is is that it's just a slow drag and you're dragging with your rod and then pulling up and then reeling in the slack is all you're doing and he caught two giants i watched him catch them and he won the tournament but that is a, a that's a technique that that i use quite a bit no matter what crankbait i'm using and that kind of stuff oh and there's one more that i haven't thought about there was one point in time where i uh was chasing schooling fish and i could not get them to bite there was a giant school of bass chasing a whole bunch of shad and bluegill on clark's hill and i couldn't get them to bite and so i grabbed a square bill and i threw it out into the into where they were schooling or into that area and i wasn't trying to hit the bottom i wasn't trying to do anything i was just trying to get it erratic crazy reaction strike or i was trying to make the bait work erratic and crazy so i would get a reaction strike and i would throw it out and it was kind of the similar to the drag and stop, but I was doing it like this. And I was ripping it and killing it and ripping it and killing it in open water. And I think I caught 15 fish doing it that way. I caught a bunch. Anyway, oh, there was one right there. Whew, I don't get scared very often. He come up and tried to hack, try to get it. But uh yeah, I was just ripping it, popping it, ripping it, and popping it. And I guess it would work really good with this scamp, but at that time it was a it was a 1.5 KVD. But that's exactly what I was doing, trying to get bit in those with those schooling fish. It's, it's it, and I have I've had it, been able to make it work several times after that, but it was always in open water. Let's talk a little bit about tuning a crankbait. Most crankbaits these days will come out of the box running pretty pretty true. When I say true, I mean. When you can make a short cast and bring it back to you, you watch the line and if it doesn't move left or right, it comes straight back to the boat. It's tuned properly. 
but a lot of times even you know while you're fishing you'll bang it and stuff like that and it'll start to run off to one side or the other or, or roll up um, if, they, if they completely do spirals out of the box throw them in the trash don't ever buy that brand again but I haven't seen any of those in many many years but um but the the biggest thing is you got to know how to tune it and so let me uh turn this camera on and get it all squared away and what i want to do is i want to show you guys how i tune it what i'll do is i'll make a short cast straight out in front of me okay just a little short cast and then i'm going to reel it back to the boat with my rod pointed straight at the crankbait and if your line goes if your bait goes to your left bring your crankbait in okay grab your needle nose or your your long nose pliers and say it went to the left I want to bend that eye just a hair to the right and when I say just a hair I'm talking about you barely even noticed that you bent it um, it's very 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 small movements make that cast again if it goes to the right bend it back bend it on the left so I'll, I'll run through that one more time you make a cast out if the bait is going to your right with the bait facing you, you want to bend that eye to the left. If the bait if the if the bait is going to your left, you want to bend that that eye to the right. And it's such a minimal minimal amount. You don't want to make a huge bend one way or the other, just a little bit. But grab a, a crankbait and try that out. Um, it's it's pretty critical most of the time that it runs true. The only time that I want it to run one way or the other, I was I want it to swim just a little bit to the left or the right. Is when I'm fishing boat docks and I want it to bang into the post on the boat dock so I'll make it to where you know, I have one I throw on the right side of the, of the dock and one I throw on the left side of the dock and I make it to where I throw along the dock and then it just works its way in in under the dock and hits those posts but that's the only time that I want it off centered. Each bait kind of requires its own style of hook set. Um, some are very very similar some are exactly the same but when you're talking about a crankbait you got all those treble hooks you've got a nice hopefully a nice rod that has a good parabolic bend and that kind of stuff so it's not the crack them and whip their rip their head off style of hook set where you you're fishing a jig or a texas rig and brush and that kind of stuff you really when you get bit you've got two treble hooks six hooks total what i do is i just tighten up on them I, i'm reeling and i just keep reeling and i tighten up on them and then i start to fight them let the rod and let the, the hooks do their work. Don't try to rip the bait out of the fish's mouth. And I want to talk a little bit about some situations that you might uh, you might see in the fall or in a late October, mid to late October, um, as the bass move further and further backs up the creeks. You'll, you'll get into areas that have a lot of little stick ups or scattered grass or that kind of stuff. And it seems like you get, you're gonna get hung up a lot and choosing the right bait is critical for that. Um, if a square bill doesn't square bill doesn't work, and one that I'm not going to do a video on because I've got plenty of videos in my, my library about them, is, is a spinner bait. Um, go to a small spinner bait and bring it through that heavy cover if you can't get a square bill on it and you still want to move pretty fast. Uh, but the square bill, when you get into a situation where there's a lot of stuff you can bump into, bump into everything. Um, these bass will find a log or a stick or something and hold on it and use it, especially in that dirty, dingy water. They'll use it as, as security. They will feel real comfortable when they can see it and they're just waiting for bait fish to swim by. And the bait fish swim by and they come out and hit it. But if you can bump into brush piles, little stick ups, everything that's in the water, try to hit it with your square bill and you're gonna get wrecked. If they're in there, you'll find some of the biggest fish on some of the coolest, you know, the, the coolest cover. And you'll know what, you know what I'm talking about when you get into that, but get into those shallow waters. And as they move into the backs of the creeks and get into those big flats in the backs of the creeks, same thing, throw a moving bait and bump into everything. Have a good lure retriever, like a stick lure retriever, or I keep a, 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 a Tipton's Golden Retriever down in, a, in the bottom of my boat. Uh, but, but you're gonna get hung up. It's just part of it, but just you, it, you're gonna catch a lot of fish doing this. So. A square bill crankbait cannot be beat in October. But like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out of the water. Go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.